Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Spicy Pisces podcast. I'm your host, Emma Jepson, and I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for joining me today. So the topic of today's episode is kind of different from other things I've talked about, and I don't think I've openly discussed this on my platform either, but it's another topic that I am very passionate about because it has affected me my entire life, and it's impacted how I live my life up until this point and how I'm going to live the rest of my life. And I feel like as someone who's grown up with severe food allergies my entire life, I've realized that a lot of people who don't have food allergies themselves or they don't have someone close to them in their life who does have one either, they don't fully understand what it's like to live with one and how to be empathetic towards the person who has one and make them feel safe when you're eating together or preparing food for them and just making them feel more comfortable and at ease. I think that's really important. And I guess the purpose of this episode is to spread more awareness about what it's like to live with food allergies. And then also, if you don't have one yourself or know someone who has one, what you can do to make someone in your life that does have one or at some point if someone comes into your life and they have one, How can you make them feel more comfortable and less isolated with their allergy? So starting from the beginning, my siblings and I all have severe food allergies. And my parents first found out with my older sister because they gave her something with cashews, I believe, when she was a baby. And her face just puffed up and she started crying because her ears got all itchy and puffy and irritated. And then they took her to the doctor's office and then they told her she's allergic to Um, select nuts and so they got me tested when I was born they got my younger brother tested when he was born and we found out that we all have allergies as well and I know that with some of my friends as well maybe one of their siblings has an allergy but then the other one doesn't and they can eat anything they want and like no sensitivities or anything at all so I just find it so fascinating how it's so random at times and No one in my immediate family has severe food allergies, but other relatives do. And so I know part of it is definitely genetic, but then I've also learned that part of it can be environmental factors as well. So I'm really curious because there's so many more kids with food allergies nowadays, even since I was a kid. There's so many more now. And it's great because there's a lot more awareness around it now and a lot more people are willing to accommodate people with allergies. But it's kind of crazy to me how much it's popping up now. So I'm really curious to see if they come out with more research on this. But going back to my original point, uh, my siblings and I, every year we go to the allergist and we get tested. And now I don't get tested every year just because your likelihood of outgrowing it once you hit, I think it's like early teens because it drops significantly. So there's no shot I'm going to outgrow my allergies now, given I'm basically 21. (laughs) Um, But as a kid, we'd go every year, and it's just a recurring appointment event that we set up. So that's been a part of our lives since I was born. And for anyone that never has been to an allergy appointment before, I can explain briefly what it is. But as a kid, we used to get, they call it a paintbrush, but it's not even a paintbrush. It's basically a, a thing they hold, and there's six... It's almost like spider legs, and then there's like eight or six ends with little scratchy things, and they basically just stick it on your arm and scratch it a little, and at the end of each, they have a different, um, what's the term? A different, like, extract of, you know, allergen you're getting tested for, whether it's shellfish, nuts, legumes, soy, any type of fresh fruit, um, eggs, dairy, wheat, gluten, anything at all. And they'll put it on and basically you wait five to ten minutes in the room before they come back in to examine. But little bumps will pop up on your arm then. And they're going to vary in size and inflammation depending on how allergic you are to that certain allergen. But once we got older, we started getting blood work done. And I honestly hate this so much more because I hate blood and veins so much. And if I can avoid getting my blood drawn, I will. I pass out almost every time. 
I squirm, I faint. I hate when they put that thing around the top of your arm to like make your vein pop out. Literally just makes me so uncomfortable. I hate that sensation. <laughs> and it's, I hate getting it done. So now I only get tested every three years. I try to make it more if I can because I hate going to the lab for the blood work. But anyways, we all have allergies. I've lived with them my whole life and that was a big part of it for me growing up. Um, on the medical side, but now I want to talk about more of the other experiences I feel like I missed out on or were altered or I felt outcasted because of my food allergies. And starting with being in elementary school, I want to talk about kids' birthday parties and when they brought treats in for school when it was their birthday. So I always had we called it like a safety snack box and me sometimes there's another kid in the class you get another kid who had a peanut allergy or something and we would both have our safety snack boxes with candies inside that our teacher would leave literally <laughs> on the very top of the cabinet with all the dust collecting in the back corner of the classroom <laughs> and anytime someone had a birthday and they brought in a treat we they'd pull it off the shelf for us and then we'd eat whatever was in the box, rotting away, <laughs> super stale, sitting up there for months at a time. And we would eat that. Well, everyone else got to eat the cupcakes the kids brought in. Or I know some kid in my town, his parents went a bakery. And so he'd bring in these crazy cool cookies and he brought in like a gingerbread house one year. But I wasn't able to eat anything because I wasn't sure if it was safe for me to eat. And so I definitely felt kind of, not kind of, very much left out. Um, and I remember <laughs> the kids would literally be eating these delicious looking brownies or something. And I'd have my, you know, pack of Sour Patch Kids half eaten from the last time someone had a birthday and they'd be so stale and I'd be like chewing on them for five minutes each while everyone else was eating whatever the kid brought in. Elementary and middle school, it was more so people still were looking over you. So, um, in... I think it was sixth grade. We were going to a roller rink, and on any field trip I had in elementary school, you would just go with your select class of like 20 kids. But in middle school, because there was, I think it was like 300 kids in my grade or 200, you would go on a bus with your homeroom. But because I had a food allergy, I had to go on a special bus with the other kids who had allergies. Because the nurse would be on there who had all of our EpiPens and Benadryls, and she could be there in case anything happened. And I mean, looking back, I really appreciate that because obviously they're just trying to look after us. But it was still so embarrassing because I had to leave my friends for my homeroom who I really wanted to sit with, but I wasn't able to because I just had to sit on this bus in case someone whipped out a jar of Nutella or something. <laughs> and I remember this trip was particularly hilarious because there was one kid, he was only allergic to shellfish, and he had to sit on the bus, though, and I was just cracking up because I'm like, who's going to whip out a lobster on our way to a roller rink in the middle of nowhere in the suburbs of Jersey? <laughs> like, I, I just thought that was so funny, the, the length and the extremes they go to look after us, which, again, I appreciated, but it was still kind of isolating and um, definitely frustrating growing up when at that age I wanted to be with my friends and I didn't want to miss out on any convos they were having on the bus ride and any jokes they might have come up with that I wouldn't understand you know once we got to the location because I missed out on that conversation or something so that was earlier on I guess kind of moving on to more so high school and then college um it's definitely been hard with roommates as well. I mean, everyone I've lived with has been so accommodating and so respectful of my allergies and making sure if they have, you know, almond butter or something or like a non-dairy milk that has nut, that's nut based, they'll keep it separate from my stuff or let me put my stuff on the top of the shelf so that nothing leaks onto my foods, which I really appreciate. And everyone's been very sensitive to that. And I've gotten better at this, but I still cannot help but feel like a burden sometimes with my roommates because they then have to shift up their behaviors and habits to accommodate me and my special like <laughs> little thing I bring with me when you live with me. Um, 
But that's definitely been something I've had to navigate and like not feeling like I'm a burden on people with this because it's not something I can change, sadly. <laughs> like there's nothing I can do to change this. And um, again, I'm so grateful all my roommates have been so supportive of this and like they want to make me feel safe and uh, they're supportive of it and accommodating. But that's something that's been tricky to navigate. Also, like, because growing up, I lived with my family and, like, we all had allergies and my mom would, like, make sure things were safe for us to eat. And so I think just living with people that hadn't grown up with me living like this and knowing, you know, habits I had and precautions I took and um, you maybe didn't understand that, like, you shouldn't um, be using the same sponge to wash a spoon with almond butter as I would be using with my dishes or something like that. Like just trying to like, you have to tell people these things, but I almost feel annoying and like, a like, like I don't want to be that girl when I say that, but like I have to because <laughs> I don't want to have an allergic reaction. So that's something I've had to da- navigate going to college and living with other people that I didn't grow up with in my house. And Something else I noted too was once I got older, the whole EpiPen OBQ situation. So I, my mom would carry it around for me when I was a kid or like the nurse would have it or my teachers would have it in elementary school. But once I got into high school and I started going out, you'd only bring like your phone with you and throw it in the back pocket of your jeans if it was a summer night and kind of hot out and you didn't have a jacket. Or like when I, for example, studied abroad, people would bring out those tiny little bags with them whenever we went out. But I had to bring a bag that was big enough and could fit my, I used to have an EpiPen as a kid, but then I got an OBQ when I got older because it's more so for the teens and like the older crew because it's not super long and narrow. It's more of a box shape and it's thinner so you can slide it into bags more easily and when you go out and whatever. And so I had to find ways to fit it into whatever I'm wearing or whatever bag I'm carrying. I have to make sure it can fit and hold it with me because I need to carry it around with me wherever I go unless I know for certain I'm not going to be eating anything within that time frame. Um, But I just bring it with me in case because, again, like you never know if someone has traces of things on it left on a table or something like that. So that's something that I've had to navigate and it used to frustrate me a lot and it still does sometimes, but I've gotten more used to it and I have certain bags that are like my go-to now or in jackets that are my go-to when I'm going out and need to carry it with me. Just a third example I wanted to bring up of being older now with food allergies when I go out to eat. Um, a specific example is just sweet green, just because I went there recently <laughs> and I go there a lot and I absolutely love their food. I just get cautious sometimes because they do use nuts in their toppings and also in some of their dressings and so every time I go they also have a sign on the window um, or on the glass above the ingredients that says if you have a food allergy let our staff know so whoever's going to be making my salad the staff member that walks up I just let them know that I have a food allergy and then Usually, they'll go get the manager and the manager will make it or someone else that's, I guess, more senior. I guess that's their policy. But they'll wash their hands and then change their gloves. And usually, they're very accommodating, but sometimes you get the people that are very judgmental and pissy about it because you're making them do more work for you, the more work than they have to do. And that just makes me feel so shitty because I feel bad then that like I'm making them go out of their way and adding in more work to their plate to accommodate me. Again, that's like another example of this theme popping up of feeling like a burden because other people have to accommodate this thing that I have and I live with. And I used to, I still sometimes do, I feel bad, but I'm also like, I'm literally giving you my money no matter what. So like, I'm just trying to make sure I can eat your food without the risk of going into anaphylactic shock. But that's also the thing where people don't understand it, you know? So it kind of frustrates me that there's like this disconnect that they're getting judgmental and pissy at me. But I'm like, I'm literally, I want to eat your food. Like, I love the food you have. And I'm literally throwing my money at you. But I just want to make sure it's safe for me to eat. And I mean, changing our gloves takes like two minutes. So um, yeah, so that's another thing I deal with. And 
uh, going out to eat, too. I try to look at menus beforehand to make sure there's food I can eat. Or I'll tell, like, let the waiter know that I have an allergy. And I used to get so embarrassed with it, especially in larger groups of people where some people didn't have one. Because there's definitely still stigma surrounding food allergies to some degree. And people kind of look at you differently sometimes. Or think you're a little weird. Or like, oh, you're the kid with the peanut allergy. Or something like that. And <laughs> um, I've definitely gotten a lot more comfortable with it. And it's just like a part of who I am now. And I'll be sure to let people know that I have an allergy if the waiter comes up to us, but it was definitely embarrassing growing up in my, I remember my face would get red and I would kind of like try to pull them to the side instead of being around everyone at the table. I try to flag them down separately and just let them know to the side because I didn't want other people to hear because I didn't want them to judge me or think of me differently. So, so yeah, that's like negative side it's had on me and like behaviors and Um, some things I've had to learn how to navigate with it. But now I want to talk about some positives with it and examples of times when people did make an effort to have a safe option for me to eat. And I can't explain how this makes me feel when people do this. Like as a kid, I'm going to list a few examples, but I just felt so loved and like seen and like I genuinely wanted to cry this first time that I'm going to share just now because I just felt like someone actually cared about me and like they wanted to make me feel included and like I could join in and be a part of whatever was going on and so in fourth grade my class had an assistant teacher slash aide and it was her birthday and she was like an adult but she just brought in cupcakes for the class to enjoy which I loved and she made cupcakes with the dirt and worms on top so the crushed oreos and then gummy worms and those were like the top tier choice for cupcakes as a kid. I absolutely love those. The time I saw someone bring them in with that plastic cupcake container and the lid on top, I'd literally go crazy. I'd get so excited. <laughs> but um, she specifically made sure that there was no nuts or any chance of cross-contamination for me. And I think she did it especially for me as well. Like She told me she made sure she baked them in like clean trays and cleaned everything and whatever. And I literally wanted to cry. I absolutely adored her. I had a few classes with her, but literally such a cute, such a mom. I loved her. But that just made me feel so special and like someone actually cared for once and was like empathetic towards the fact that I'd been left out of a lot of things, but I was able to feel included this time. Um, Similar example was in fifth grade at one girl's birthday. I'm pretty sure it was at a trampoline park, like Sky Zone or something, but I don't remember if the mom asked the girl beforehand and she knew because the teacher would say in our our class or whatever, like from previous birthday parties, or if she like asked my mom or someone. But I remember when they brought up the cake to sing happy birthday to her, the mom brought over two cupcakes for me in a separate container. And she said that they were not free and that they were safe for me to eat. And I was like, oh my God, like that's... (laughs) I wasn't expecting that at all. I was just expecting to, again, not be able to have a slice of cake and just watch everyone else eat it around me. Um, But that just made me feel so loved and seen. And that's also another time I wanted to cry as a kid. It was just so heartwarming to me and sweet. Moving on more to later in my life, I guess in high school and middle school, my friends, I was friends with them for many years. So they were pretty accommodating to me and at lunch and stuff if they had something with nuts they'd make sure not to like touch me or sit directly next to me or something like that but coming to college like I mentioned earlier a lot of changes a lot of new people you have to re-explain your situation to them and if they don't know how to um kind of accommodate for you you kind of have to explain to them protocol situations things you can can't do what's safe what's not safe um and Again, starting my internship last year because my school, um, I think I mentioned this before, but we have a co-op system where you basically do two six month long internships during your time at this college. And so my first one was last spring and I had to meet a new group of people and my team, we had an outing to a darts place and um, it was actually super fun. And they brought out some like 
burgers and sliders and flatbreads and other bar kind of food. But my direct manager and another team member noticed that I hadn't touched anything yet. And so they're like, eat something, like, don't be shy, grab something. And at this point, I was a little bit more comfortable speaking up about my allergies. I basically just told them, oh, I have food allergies, so I'm just not exactly sure what I'm able to eat. But then they called over a staff member right away and had them check the menu and check in with the kitchen and uh, basically come back out and point to what was safe for me to eat and what had no chances of cross-contamination. And so that was really sweet. And I absolutely loved them for that. <laughs> Um, And I ended up enjoying the food and it was so much fun. And also my last co-op was in tax. And so after our first tax deadline, when all the taxes for, forget the exact group, I don't know if it was like 1099s or 1042s were due, what type of document. But basically after the first deadline, a co-worker brought in donuts from Cane's in Boston. Um... Not the Cane's Chicken. <laughs> Their donuts, I feel like, would be a little sus. It's up in Downtown Crossing, and they have, like, my favorite donuts here in the city. And he brought them in and got, like, the bacon, maple one, Boston cream, which theirs are so good, some glazed chocolate frosted, and he made sure that he didn't get any with nuts so that I could eat from the box as well and have some, which I really appreciated because that was really fun to celebrate with them then. And be able to enjoy the food that people brought in. So yeah, those are some more positive examples and times where people made me feel included. And I really appreciated it just because I felt like they went out of their way to make me feel included. But I really appreciated that because I felt like I was actually able to be a part of the celebration then instead of, uh, you know, not being able to fully participate in it or fully participate in whatever event was going on, wherever we were, I felt like I was really being included then. And like, they genuinely cared about my allergy and they understood it and they were willing to go out of their way to accommodate for me. That just made me feel really, really seen and just loved. So those are some examples of more positive experiences that I've had with my allergies. Now I want to move on to some funny experiences and My freshman year of high school, we were on our genetics unit in my biology class. And so my teacher had everyone raise their hand if they had a food allergy. And then he went around the room and asked each person raising their hand what they were allergic to. And so he gets to me and I say, tree nuts. And he kind of gives me a blank stare. You know that emoji combo where it's like an eye, the mouth, and then the eye? (laughs) I've been using that so much recently, but that was his exact reaction. And I was so confused and he didn't say anything for a few seconds. And then he was like, oh, you mean like acorns? (laughs) I was like, dude, you're like 27 years old. Oh my God, that was so funny. Then I had to explain what it was to him. And I think I got pretty embarrassed because then everyone kind of laughed. And then I was like, no, it's like pretty much any other nut besides a peanut. Because peanuts are technically part of the legume family because they grow from the ground. Um, And I've had to share that with a lot of people, (laughs) surprisingly. But that was really funny, though. And then also at birthday parties, especially now when you go to people's houses and they'll pass out cake or something, I'll be like, oh, no, I'm good. And then they'll give me a weird look. And then I tell them I'm allergic to nuts. But then sometimes the cake doesn't actually have nuts. So then they're like, oh, no, there's no nuts in the cake, though. And then I'm like, oh, well, like cross-contamination is something I get worried about, Um, you know, like if there's trace amounts of something or whatever. And then they get all confused (laughs) because they don't understand the concept. And then in my head, I'm like thinking about the crippling anxiety I have when I'm eating food where I don't know if it's 100% safe for me. Um, (laughs) In my head, that's what I'm thinking I want to tell them what it's like, but I can't because we're celebrating someone's birthday. I feel like some people do get pretty judgmental about that. They'll give me a glare, like, side-eye. <laughs> but it's just funny, though, when people have that reaction, though, where, like, they don't understand that when you say you have an allergy to something, that means that you can't eat it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on into the reactions section, I want to talk about the first one I had that was pretty bad. I think I was in seventh grade. And it was post the lacrosse game. 
and my mom took me to this juice acai place and I I got a smoothie but it technically didn't have any nuts in it but as soon as I took a sip my throat I just felt it get so itchy and my throat start to close up a little bit and it became hard to swallow like almost immediately and I remember I drank a little bit more because I like convinced myself that I wasn't actually having a reaction it was a little delulu and I drank a little bit more than I remember when we got home I told my mom like my throat felt like it was closing up and she was like just drink water <laughs> so I drank some water which I mean obviously that didn't do anything but then she gave me some Benadryl I think and it became better but I guess in that instance I should have used my um my EpiPen, but I didn't because I was also anxious about, because if you inject it in yourself, you have to go to the hospital then because it basically gives you a rush of adrenaline um, just to get your heart pumping and to get the blood moving and whatever. So I've never actually had to use it before. Um, I think that's probably the worst reaction I've had, knock on wood. So I haven't actually used it before, um, which... So I can't really speak to what it's like to have that, but I know of other people who have, and it's definitely very scary. And I mean, this is an example where I should have, but thankfully I was okay. I think it went away about like an hour after. Um, But that definitely exacerbated my anxiety around food. And like when I went out to eat, I remember after that, I was like so paranoid for the next six months about Anytime I went out to eat or a friend's house and they made food or something like that. So, um, like, I just, I triple read labels of food that I already knew I could eat, but I'd read it, like, an extra five times because I was still so scared there might be a chance that that would happen again. And that got better with time and I think I calmed down after a while and, like, as I got older. But I've definitely gone through phases where I've had heightened anxiety around this kind of stuff but I've learned how to manage it better now but I think another time when it got worse was when I was in my semester abroad I was studying in Rome and I went to Spain for a weekend with two of my friends and we went to this place for dinner and we basically ordered a paella and uh with vegetables and we got the same one same style the night before in another place and I was totally fine so I figured I would be fine if we got it again at this place but I guess they change up what they put in it obviously depending on the restaurant which I should have thought about but I didn't and in this one I think they I'm still not exactly sure what it was if it was more so of a cross contamination from something they made in the pot beforehand or if it was water chestnuts still not exactly sure but I think that's what it was but Rather than it being like a throat issue this time, it was my stomach. And I've never had a stomach pain that severe before. It was like almost instantaneously. So that's that's how I knew that's what it was. It wasn't any of the appetizers we had at the top of us. But it was the sharpest pain I've ever felt there. So I went to the bathroom and I thought I had to shit <laughs> initially. But that's not what it was. Because then we went outside. We paid the check to call the Uber. and. Um, I needed to like go lie down and so we're sitting on the pavement outside this restaurant and I literally had to sit down and hold myself up with my arm my face was so pale and one of the waiters actually came over and he's like is she okay (laughs) because I was about to like pass out it was so painful and he basically called the the um the ambulance or like the clinic or something like that and put them on the phone with me um because they they explained to him like they thought I was having an allergic reaction and um you know I obviously was in a foreign country so I didn't know like what the insurance policy would be like or the medical procedure so I didn't want to go anywhere because it was just my stomach too so I figured I'd be okay but that was really sweet, though, actually, that he came over and gave me the phone and told the person that I was American, so I spoke English. Um, I actually really appreciated that, and I'm grateful he was there. I did, We didn't end up going to the wherever he called. They said they could send, like, a car or an ambulance or something, but I figured I'd be okay since it was just my stomach, and 
it was already starting to subside a little bit. But that was another example of where I was pretty anxious after that for a few months because that was so random. But I was honestly scared going there in general because I was living in Rome and I know they use a lot of nuts and pestos and the cheeses and the charcuterie boards and other pasta sauces and everything. So I was nervous about that. I know the UK is pretty good. I've been there before and I know they passed a law. I forget what it's called, but now every restaurant has to put these icons next to every dish that basically tells you what allergens are in it, whether it's wheat, eggs, dairy, nuts, shellfish. So that's really cool. But I knew that other places in Europe aren't as sensitive because like not as many people have allergies there. They're not as aware about it as in the US. And so I was definitely nervous about that, but I just found it to be so funny that the only time I had a reaction was one towards the very tail end of my time there and two it happened in another country completely. So not even where I was really living, which also made it scarier because I was only there with my two other friends. Like we didn't know anyone else in the country that we could call or like our, um, our program coordinators or anyone like that to help if there was an insurance issue or like hospital thing. But thankfully it ended up being fine. I was fine the next day when I woke up. I think those were like the main two. I've had some itchy throats every now and then from some random stuff um, and some close encounters as well. But I've always been pretty cautious about it. You know, my siblings, especially my sister, has not been. And she's had some pretty bad ones. Yeah, I guess we've all been okay. And like, obviously, we've learned from those experiences to be extra careful and literally just to ask. Like, you're not, although you might feel like a burden, you're just doing what you need to do to feel safe and eat something that's safe for you to eat. So, like, just, just ask. It never hurts to ask. And if you have to explain what it means to people and what's safe versus not safe and what you can tolerate versus can, it's good to have a little script about that or like a general idea of how to explain it to people so that they can understand it if they've never had to deal with that before. And I definitely get frustrated with it sometimes. I used to a lot more when I was younger. And like I said, I've gotten better at managing it now. And I've learned to accept that it's just a part of who I am now and I just have to live with it. But I used to get so mad at the fact that like a tiny, super small particle of an almond or something could send me into a full-on anaphylactic shock or even worse and I used to get so jealous of the kids who could eat anything they wanted so freely anywhere like at anyone's house or if we were at a bakery any restaurant like they could eat whatever they wanted try all these fun foods and this is also hard for me now especially when I was living abroad because I love food I've always been a huge foodie but I wasn't able to go to these super innovative classy fine dining places because they use so many different ingredients and a lot of very unique ones as well that I don't even know if I'm allergic to because they're so unusual and exotic that I've definitely never been tested for it before because it's not something that they would think to test me for so I don't know if I can have it or not like I don't want to take a chance so that's definitely been hard and that was hard there as well because there's a lot of things I wanted to try and a lot of cool baked goods in other countries, but I just, the cross contamination, I just can't take that chance because it's, there's a very high likelihood that there is a cross contamination or it does contain something I'm allergic to. Um, so that's something I'm still struggling with and not being able to experience these certain things because of my food allergies. But as a kid, I used to just get so mad at the fact but like I just felt like I'd been handed like a wrong card in life or something like someone just (laughs) like I don't know it just made me so mad and I was just so jealous of these kids who didn't have to think twice about eating anything or they didn't have to ask anyone and I also just felt like a burden growing up when people had to either um, go out of their way to make something okay for me to eat or if I had to ask them if it was okay for me to eat and they didn't know Also, the fact that people, if they're like, oh, sorry, like, I don't know, then they kind of take pity on you almost and, like, make it seem like a bad thing and, like, you're missing out. It's just super uncomfortable, but I've just learned to navigate that better now, and I mean, I remind myself that there's some people that are allergic to literal eggs and dairy and other things a lot worse that are a lot more common, so I still have a lot of freedom 
and what I'm able to eat. And there's a lot more places that are a lot more accommodating to my nut allergy. So I'm very grateful for that. I know my cousin's son is allergic to eggs very badly and they didn't even realize the amount of things that you get that are covered in like egg wash or they use egg whites and a side ingredient, but they, you know, they might even not tell you that there's eggs in it. So that's really scary. And I mean, if you don't have a food allergy to <laughs> and you're listening, um, I mean, just be grateful. I think you don't even realize like the privilege you have. A lot of people don't even realize the privilege that they, that comes with that and being able to try so many things so freely and not have to think twice about this and have this anxiety around food. So that's another thing to think about as well. I think ultimately what I want to say is that if you don't have a food allergy yourself, but like a friend, family member, or other loved one does, if you go out of your way to either ensure that the restaurant choice is safe to eat at, or you get an allergen-friendly birthday cake, or if you cook for them at home, you make sure that there's no cross-contamination at all, they're going to appreciate that effort so much. And you're going to make them feel so loved because you've gone out of your way to make them feel included and like allow them to feel safe and not stressed around food, which a lot of us have our entire life. Um, And you're just making them feel at ease. And I really, really appreciate it when people do that for me. And when I don't even ask them to sometimes, I just find it to be really, really sweet. I don't know if it's the whole like, acts of service thing, if that's one of my love languages, but that just makes me feel really, I feel like people are very like connected to me then and they care about me. And so if you're listening and um, you don't have a food allergy again, I highly recommend doing this or even just talking to them about their experience growing up with allergies and like what it was like, um, how you can help them make them feel more comfortable things you can change or adjust to make them feel more at ease. So I don't even think people realize that we do live differently because of it. So just opening up about it and having that conversation with them is a really great first step. And if you are listening and you do have a food allergy, I want to let you know that if you ever felt like the weird kid growing up or the outcasted kid, you're not alone. It's nothing to feel ashamed about or you shouldn't feel like a burden because of it. Some people will choose to make fun of you for it, judge you for it, not choose to understand your perspective and what it's like living with one, which definitely sucks and makes you feel different and belittled at times. But it's a part of who you are and you need to own it and learn to be at peace with it and accept it because your life will become so much more enjoyable when you do. And with this not feeling ashamed about letting the waiter know if you do have an allergy or unapologetically asking someone to change their gloves or the ice cream um, scoop that they're using to ensure a minimal chance of cross-contamination. You're not a burden. You're not asking for too much. You're simply ensuring your safety and doing what you need to do to safely eat and live your life. So that's where I'm going to wrap up with this episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, feel free to leave a rating. If you're going five stars, but whatever you think it's deserving of. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, of your week, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.